this video, we'll be taking the weight of a two-month-old infant using an electronic scale. Before weighing, have the mother or caregiver take off the infant's clothes such as shoes, pants, jackets, sweaters, or hats that will affect the weight. Also, have the caregiver check the infant's diaper and change it if needed because a full diaper could weigh up to two pounds. Make sure a paper liner is placed onto the scale before weighing and that the scale is on and set to zero. Have the caregiver gently place the child onto the center of the scale. Younger infants should be measured lying down, but you might consider weighing older infants sitting up so they can fit comfortably in the center of the scale. Try to make sure the child isn't hanging on to the caregiver or that she isn't being held or touched, because that could throw the weight off. Also, it's best if the child doesn't touch the sides of the scale and all of the child's body must be within the scale's tray, because this too affects the weight. Don't just allow the scale to adjust and stabilize. Most infant digital scales display weight in pounds, ounces, and tenths of an ounce. Record the weight to the nearest ounce. As you can see, this child weighs 11 pounds, 10 ounces. Make every reasonable effort to obtain as accurate a measurement as possible by weighing the child alone, but we all know young children can sometimes be a challenge to manage. So if you find yourself in this situation, you can weigh the caregiver and child on the adult scale and then weigh the caregiver without the child. Then all you need to do is subtract the weight of the caregiver from the weight of the caregiver and child together and you'll have the weight of the child. That's how you measure the weight of an infant using an electronic scale. In this video, we'll be taking the weight of a two-month-old infant using a balance beam scale. Before weighing, have the caregiver take off the infant's clothes, such as shoes, pants, jackets, sweaters, or hats that will affect the weight. But do have the caregiver check the infant's diaper and change it if it's needed, because a full diaper could weigh up to two pounds. Make sure a paper liner is placed onto the scale before weighing, and that the upper and lower counterbalance weights are at the far left at zero. Then have the caregiver gently place the child onto the center of the scale. Younger infants should be measured lying down. You can consider weighing older infants sitting up so they fit comfortably in the center of the scale. Make sure the child doesn't hang on to a caregiver and that the caregiver isn't holding or really touching the child. That way you get a really accurate measurement. And also, try to make sure the child can't touch the sides of the scale and that all of his body is within the scale's tray, because this too will affect the weight. Move the lower weight over to the right until the indicator arm drops down. You can then move the smaller weight over to the right until the indicator arm balances in the center. Record this measurement to the nearest one ounce. And that's how you measure the weight of an infant using a balance beam scale. Here we'll be using a balance beam scale to measure the weight of an adult. So before weighing, have the adult take off her shoes and any heavy clothing like jackets or sweaters. And that the upper and lower counterbalance weights are at the far left at zero. Have your client step onto the scale and remain still and move the lower weight over to the right until the indicator arm drops. You can then move the upper weight to the right until the indicator arm balances in the center. Record measurement to the nearest quarter pound or four ounces. Yeah, that's how you measure the weight of an adult using a balance beam scale. This is how you measure the weight of a child or an adult using a digital scale. In this video, we'll be taking the weight of a four-year-old boy using an electronic scale. Before weighing, have the caregiver take off the child's shoes or any heavy clothing like jackets or sweaters that might affect the child's weight. Make sure that the scale is on and set to zero. Then have the child step onto the scale and remain still until the scale finishes adjusting, which is usually a couple of seconds. Now, depending upon the type of electronic scale you'll be using, this measurement will be displayed in pounds and ounces or pounds and tenths of a pound as pictured here. Your supervisor will tell you about your state's requirements as well as the unit of measurement you'll need to enter into your computer system. Write down the weight and then have the child step off the scale, which will cause most electronic scales to reset to zero. And this is how you measure the weight of a child or an adult using a digital scale. Now we'll be measuring the length of a two-month-old infant using a recumbent length board. Again, before measuring, have the caregiver remove shoes and any heavy clothing the child might be wearing. And make sure a paper liner is placed onto the board and the child's diaper is dry. Have the caregiver change it if it's necessary. 
Now, since the headboard needs to rest flat against the child's head, make sure anything like hair clips or hats are removed. Some hairstyles, like braids, can also prevent the headboard from resting flat and can cause an inaccurate measurement. So under these circumstances, have the caregiver do her best to flatten the hair. But if it really can't be done, just record it in the chart. The caregiver will then gently place the child flat on his back and then hold the child's head firmly against the headboard just by gently cupping their hands over the child's ears. You can then bring the child's legs together by holding both of the child's ankles with one hand. Use your hand and arm to gently push down the legs and straighten them out. To help ensure an accurate measurement, just make sure the child's head is flat against the headboard and both legs are straight. You can then slide the footboard flat against the bottom of the child's feet using your free hand. Make a mental note of this measurement to the nearest one-eighth of an inch. Some children aren't comfortable in this position and they might become fussy or cry. Just keep patient and focus on getting accurate measurements. And remember, with some time and practice, you'll perfect your ability and become really good at this. This is how you measure the recumbent length of an infant. And now we'll be measuring the height of an adult using a manual stadiometer. Before measuring, of course, have the client take off her shoes and any heavy clothing she might be wearing. Since the headboard needs to rest flat against the client's head, make sure anything like hair clips or hats are removed. And remember, some hairstyles, like braids, can also prevent the headboard from resting flat and cause an inaccurate measurement. If this is the case, have the client do her best to flatten her hair. But if she can't, then just record that in the chart. Have the client stand under the headboard. Make sure the heels, buttocks, shoulders, and head are all flat up against the vertical beam before lowering the headboard because this will help ensure an accurate measurement. Then loosen the wing nut that holds the headboard in place and lower the headboard gently onto the client's head and retighten the nut. Read the measurement at the read here arrow or designated line to the nearest one eighth of an inch. This is how you measure the height of an adult or child using a manual stadiometer. 